Okay, great. Um, hi, I'm, my name's Richard Taylor. Um, I'm uh, standing in today because both Dick and Peter are out of town. Um, and I'm losing my voice, so you're going to be lucky to finally hear this lecture, but <coughs> we'll see what I can do. Um, so they asked me to talk about the symmetric group, um, and in particular, uh, conjugacy classes in the symmetric group. And so I think you've already, let me start by reminding you about the symmetric group. I think you've, you've, uh, you know most of this. So, what, and tell me if, if I'm saying things that you are not familiar with. So, it's traditional to write SN for the symmetric group on N letters. Uh, which is the set of uh, bijections from the set of n elements to itself. And traditionally, you label those elements uh, 1 to n. Um, so the permutations or bijections, it seems to me the book you're using is, doesn't make a very good job of this. It, most of the book writes elements, functions acting on the left. And to meet other conventions, it suddenly changes that in this section on the symmetric group. So I'm going to do anyway. I, it seems to me silly to change in the middle of the book because it's just going to confuse people. But anyway, I'll do what the book does. So <clears throat> it's going to act. These permutations are going to act on the right, which means I'm going to write P of i, as long as I remember to do this, rather than i of p. And this has the effect that if you first act on i by p and then on q, it's the same as acting on i by the product pq. Um, what else should I uh, remind you about? So then there are two notations for elements for permutations or elements of the symmetric group. The first is simply to give a list of where all the elements go. So if I had an element of the symmetric group on six letters, which sent one to three, I would write one underneath the three underneath the one to show that one goes to three, and then we might have two to six, three to five, four to four. 5 to 1, and 6 to 2. Okay, so this is the permutation that sends this row, an element of this row, to the element of that row. And I'm going to be using that a lot, so let me call that particular permutation P. And <coughs> uh, just to review how this works, let me have a second permutation Q, which will be 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, two, one, four, five, six, three. And so if I'm interested in the product PQ, six, five, four, one, two, into Two, one, four, five, six, three. So are you all, you're, you're all familiar with how you would calculate a product like that? Somebody's shaking their head. So, sorry? Right. So what would happen to one? Under, we've, because we're writing the action on the right, so if I look at one, Again, I'm just going to write where. Are you familiar with this notation for writing permutations? There's two rows in this way. Actually, it's new for us. So, so, sorry? It's sort of new for me anyway. I oh, I see. Yeah, OK. So I had understood from what I had been told that you were familiar with this, so I'm sorry. Right, so it's just, it's just a way of writing what the permutation does. You just want to keep track of where every element goes. So in the first row, you write d1 
the elements that you're going to permute, this will be an element of the symmetric group on six letters. And on the second row, you write where they're going to go. So 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 6, 3 goes to 5, 4 goes to 4, 5 goes to 1, 6 goes to 2. So if I want to figure out a product of two such things, what do I have to do? Um, if I, I have to figure out where 1 goes. So I have to figure out what's the image of 1 under the product PQ, which is the same as 1 acted on by P and then acted on by Q. So 1 under P goes to 3, and then under Q, 3 goes on to 4. So it's 1, 4. Similarly, 2 under P goes to 6, and then under Q, 6 goes on to 3. So I would write a 3 here. So does somebody want to tell me what I write underneath 3? 6. Thank you. 6. And 4 goes to 4 goes to 5. 5 goes to 1 goes to 2. 6 goes to 2 goes to 1. I haven't made a mistake. Okay, so this is one notation for permutations. Um, uh, very straightforward. Um, there's a second uh, important notation, which is the cycle notation. So have you, did you, have you met the cycle notation to some... Yeah. So, so, uh -huh. so for some reason they've talked about the cycle notation and not the easy one. Okay. Um, so in the cycle notation, <coughs> you somehow think more about what's actually happening. So you have the point 1, and let's look at the permutation P. What does P do to 1? 1 goes to <coughs> 3. And then if you look at 3, 3 goes to 4. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the wrong one. 3 goes to 5 under P. And 5 goes back to 1. So if you keep applying P, then one's going, you're just going to, one's going to three, goes to five, goes to one. It's just going to cycle around these three points. And if you look at, so what are we missing? We haven't got two yet. So if we have two, what will happen to two? Two will go to six, and then six will go back to two. So we have two going to six, and then that will go back to two. So as you keep applying P, you're just going to keep cycling around these two points, and then finally uh, there's the point 4, which is just left fixed. It goes to itself when you apply P. And you record this in the so-called cycle notation. One, you just write strings in parentheses for these cycles or the orbits that you get up for P. So 1 goes to 3, goes to 5, goes back to 1. 2 goes to 6, goes back to 2. 4 stays where it is. Okay? So this is, this is another, the so-called cycle notation for P. And there's a certain amount of ambiguity when you write this. Well, I mean, there's not a unique way of writing P in cycle notation. I can put the cycles in different orders and... Um, I can, within each cycle, I can rearrange the order of the letters. So I could also write this as 5, 1, 3. I can cyclically permute these, because 5 goes to 1 goes to 3. I could, depends where in this triangle I start. If I have a 1 cycle, I can just drop it. Doesn't really make any difference. And it doesn't matter what order I write the cycles in. They don't involve any common numbers, so that this only moves 5, 1, and 3, and this only moves 2 and 6. So there's a certain amount of ambiguity. Uh, but the, then the, that's the limit of the ambiguity. <coughs> um. 
Um, so, um, the basic fact is that any uh, permutation can be written uniquely as a product of disjoint cycles. Disjoint meaning they have no uh, numbers in common, no number occurs in both cycles, of disjoint cycles. Um, up to the possibility, the, the various uh, switches I explained you could make there, um, except you can reorder the cycles um, cyclically permute the elements in a cycle and you can drop one cycle. So, I mean, sometimes people would make the convention you always have to put them in, but it's uh, just time consuming to do that. Okay, so is this, this familiar to you from? Yes, good. And you can calculate products in this way. So um, in this notation, then Q would be uh, it would send 1 to 2, which goes back to 1, 3 to 4, uh, 4 to 5, 5 goes on to 6, goes back to 3. So this is the cycle decomposition of Q. And you can calculate again the product PQ as, so it's 2, 6, 5, 1, 3 times 1, 2, three, four, five, six. So what's, how do you work out the product when you work in cycle shapes? So is this something you've, you've practiced doing? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot, okay. So, um, oh, so for some, for some reason I've, let me, sorry, let me correct this. Let me just use the original form I had for this thing. Uh, one, three, five, doesn't matter. 2, 6. Okay, so I want to write it as a product of cycles. Well, I ch have to choose to start somewhere. It doesn't matter. Let me choose to start with 1. I want to find the cycle involving 1. So where does 1 go if I apply the product PQ? Well, I'm, act I'm sort of acting from the right. So 1, first of all, goes to 3. I look along for a 1. I find it here. It moves to 3. I've now got a 3, and I look along to find anywhere else it might be and see where that moves from. The next time I find a 3 is here, it moves to a 4. Then I look along, and there are no more 4s. So it ends up at 4. Then uh, I'm going to start with 4 and see where this moves to. So 4, I look along until I find a 4. The first place I find it is here. That 4 moves to a 5, and I don't see any more 5. So <clears throat> that will end up at 5. I then s want to find out where 5 goes to, so I look along here. First place I find a 5 is here. Where does the 5 go? It's cycled back to 1. Okay, so now I've got a 1. I move along again to look for another 1. The next 1 is here that goes to a 2, and there are no more 2s, so it ends up at 2. Now I want to ask where does 2 go to? Okay, so I start with 2. What's the first thing that tells me to move a 2? It's this 2 cycle. It's going to move the 2 to the 6. I've now got a 6. Anything else going to move a 6? Here's a 6. It's going to be moved back to a 3. Nothing else will move a 3. So I get 3. So I'm always moving to the right and switching something every time I reach I, that number occurs. So where have I got to 3? I look along the first 3 is here. This cycle will move it to a 5. I've now got a 5. Move along. The next place I see a 5 is here, which is moved to a 6. Left there. 6. Look along and 
First 6 I see is here, it's moved to a 2. Look along for a 2, there's a 2 here, it's moved to a 1. Look along, there are no more 1, so that's a 1, and we already had a 1, so it's now going to cycle back on itself. So the product PQ is just 1 6 cycle, and uh, with a bit of luck, this agrees with what we had here. 1 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 2, to 2 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 1. So it does agree with what we did before. Okay, is that clear to everybody, or do you want me to do another one? <laughs> Some people don't want me to do another one. Some people aren't saying anything. Is that clear? Yeah, great. What's uh, p to the 6, by the way? It's the identity, right. How did you see that? There's, there's an element of order 3, an element of order 2, an element of order 1. So if, if you raise it to the 6, then they all go to 1. Here. Yeah, that's right. If you these elements, it's a product of things that commute with each other when, because um, disjoint cycles, cycles with no common, common element commute, as I explained here, I can reorder them. It doesn't matter whether I do the 2 to 6 first or the 5 to 1 first. These things commute because they've got no common element. And so if I raise it to the 6th power, it's like raising this to the 6th power and this to the 6th power and this to the 6th power. This is a 3 cycle, so when I do it 3 times, I get the identity. This is a 2 cycle, so when I do it twice, I get the identity. So when I do it 6 times, this is the identity, this is the identity, and this always was the identity. Or you can think, sort of pictorially, as I do P, I move around this triangle. If I do it any multiple of 3 times, everything in this triangle will be fixed. If I do it any multiple of 2 times, everything here will be fixed. And this uh, somehow illustrates the, the beauty of the cycle notation. You can very quickly see things like this. Whereas if I just wrote down, well, I've removed it, well, I, I wrote down Q equals this and <clears throat> asked you what Q to the fourth was. And from this table, it would be completely hopeless. I mean, you just have to do the calculation. But as soon as you've written it in this form, you immediately see that Q to the fourth is the identity because it's the commuting product of a two cycle and a four cycle. Okay. Okay, well the next thing I want to do is calculate the product Q inverse times P times Q. So, let me write that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, one, four, five, six, three. Inverse. I'm going to write this in this shape. I'm going to write P as a in the cycle shape. And then I'm going to write the Q again in this shape. One, two. Three, four. Mm. I was told to quarter these boards. Well, maybe this will just fit. Uh, two, one, four, five, six, three. And I want to express the answer as a cycle. Uh, let me start the first cycle with the element two. <coughs> Can anybody tell me what? To <coughs> well, I want to calculate this. In, under this whole product, what's 2 going to go to? 4. So 2, I've got to do the inverse of this permutation. Where's 2 going to go to? Well, I just look, at, I look for 2 in the bottom row and look up above it. What mapped to 2? It was 1. So 2 goes to 1, 1 goes to 3, and then 3 goes to 4. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, where am I? OK, 4. Where does 4 go to? Well, 4 came from 3, goes to 5, which goes to 6. 
and 6 came from 5, which goes to 1, <coughs> uh, sorry, goes to 1, which goes to 2. So it cycles back to 2. And then let me put a 1 here. 1 came from 2, goes to 6, goes to 3. And 3 came from 6, goes to 2, goes to 1. So that closes, and we're left with a 5. 5 came from 4, stays where it is, goes back to 5. Can anybody tell me simply what's happened when I've done this? Yeah, but how could I have seen these numbers almost at a glance without doing the computation I just went through? Can anybody see? That's right. So first of all, you should notice the cycle shape is the same. By the cycle shape, I mean the number of cycles and their length. We've got a three cycle, a two cycle, and a one cycle. So the cycle shape has been unchanged. And in place of the 1, 3, 5, what do I have here? Well, 2, 4, 6, but <laughs> what? <coughs> Sorry? The Q image of those. <coughs> 2 is just the Q of 1. 4 is just the Q of 3. And 6 is just the Q of 5. So this was Q of 1, Q of 3, Q of 5, Q of 2, Q of 6, Q of 4. So when you form the conjugate Q inverse PQ, you, and you're working in cycle shape, it's very easy what you do. You just take the, <coughs> the original cycles and replace Every, every time you have an integer here, you just replace it with Q of that integer. Um, so let me, in case that's not obvious, let me explain slightly more carefully why that's true. Um, so the key point is the following formula. Suppose I is sent by P to J. And now what are we interested in? We're interested in I, where I acted on by Q is going to be sent by the product Q inverse P Q. Well, what is this product? The Q and the Q inverse cancel, so I just can and Changing the order of the parentheses, this is I acted on by P, acted on by Q. So <clears throat> I acted on by Q is sent by this conjugate of P to the image under Q of I acted on by P. OK? And so if I have a cycle, so if P. Um, P is the form I1, I2, IR, I1 primed up to IS primed, and then some more cycles. Then this Q inverse PQ, what's the cycle shape of Q inverse PQ? Sorry? That's right. So if I look at I1Q, let's start the first cycle with I1Q. Where's I1Q going to be sent by this? Well, it's going to be sent to I1P, which is just I2, acted on by Q. Where's I2Q going to be sent to? Well, I2Q is going to be sent by this to I2P, which is just I3, acted on by Q. Um, 
up to IR acted on by Q. Where's IRQ going to be sent? IRQ is going to be sent by this to IRP, which is just I1, acted on by Q, which was the first element of this cycle. Then we're going to get I1 primed Q. Let's start the next cycle with that. Where's, where's this going to be sent? I1 prime Q is sent by this to I1 primed P, which is I2 primed, acted on by Q. Okay, so this is just what we, what we observed in this case, that when we conjugate by permutation Q, what happens to the cycle shape is that we replace every element in the cycle by its image under Q. Okay. Yes. Ah, uh, I've I've moved it onto the wrong side, haven't I? My apologies. Thank you very much. One Q, three Q, five Q, two Q, six Q, four Q. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions about that? Okay, so let me formalize that as well. Write it down. Um, so, first of all, two permutations. which are conjugate in Sn the usual words people use are have the same cycle shape so I should I haven't I mentioned it briefly, but I haven't really said what I mean by cycle shape. So by cycle shape, I mean that when you express them as a product of disjoint cycles, you have the same number of cycles of, the, of each length. So I, E, when expressed as a product of disjoint cycles, Same number of cycles of every length. So this and this have the same cycle shape. They have one cycle of length three, one cycle of length two, and one cycle of length one. Okay, and sort of that's that's now obvious from this calculation. I mean, we've taken the cycle shape for P, and we've taken the same one for for Q inverse PQ, and the converse is also true. So conversely, um, where are we? Two permutations. If two permutations. have the same cycle shape, they are conjugate. So the second, um, <clears throat> uh, I'll justify this in a moment, but the second thing that um, the cycle notation is very good for is that it very quickly allows you to understand conjugacy in the symmetric group, and in general, understanding conjugacy in a group is a, one of the most important things to be able to do. Okay, well, let me justify this second assertion by just doing an example, and I think it will be immediately clear 
why that's true in general. So let me again look at my example. This, and I want to write down something with the same cycle shape. This has the same cycle shape, so this proposition is telling me I can write this as a conjugate of this for some q. Well, what q should I take? Let's have somebody outside the front row answer. One to six, three to five, yes, right, five to four. Okay, so we know that this will just be Q of one, Q of three, Q of five, and we want that to be the cycle six, five, four. So we better send, well, we've got some choice. We could send one to five, three to four, and five to six, but the obvious choice, the way I've written it, is just to send one to six, three to five, five to four, two to three, six to, uh, six to two, and 4 to 1. And I hope it's sort of obvious that, that that construction will work whenever I write down 2 in any symmetric group, whenever I write down two, 2 products of disjoint cycles with the same cycle shape, I can always, just by doing this, find a permutation that will conjugate one to the other. Okay? Um, if, if all the cycles are different lengths, um, so if I had two cycles of the same length, there would be some ambiguity about which of those cycles I was, I was going to, do you see what I'm saying or you want me to, do you see what I'm saying? Um, so, um, you could write down a formula for, um, there's an interesting question, so let me spend a moment. Uh, so if I looked at the cycle one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, one, two, uh, sorry, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and I asked how many ways are the, how many Q, so I want the number of the set of Q such that Q inverse this Q would equal, um, so Q in S12, such that this is equal to, uh, well, I can even write the same one again. It doesn't matter. Any, anything with the same shape would do. So can you see what, what the answer to this is? Let me have a moment to see. So I've got to match this two cycle with one of these three two cycles. So how many choices do I have there? So I have three choices. When I do that, how many ways are the matching of these two two cycles together? Two. I can either send one to five and two to six, or I can send one to six and two to five. Okay, assume that I've matched, chosen the way to match these two. How many ways to, how many two cycles could I match this one with? Yeah, two. two. And when I do that, how many ways are there of actually doing that matching? Two. And then with the final two cycle, how many ones can I match it with? One. one. And there are two ways of doing it. Okay, and then 
let's look at the three cycles. Um, how many ways of um, matching, how many three cycles could I match this with? Two. Two. And how many ways, if I choose to match it with this one, how many ways of matching it are there? No. How many ways of matching it are there? Three. Three. I can send the, I ask where the seven goes, it can go to the ten or eleven or twelve. Let's suppose I send the seven to the ten. Where does the eight have to go? To the eleven and the nine has to go to, so once you've fixed where in this cycle you're sending the first element, everything else is fixed because it has to be a cyclic permutation. So there are just three ways of matching these two cycles. And then this three cycle has to go to here. And again, there are three ways of matching it. So I could write this as 3 factorial times 2 to the 3 times uh, 2 factorial times 3 squared. <coughs> OK? And in general, I mean, if, if I had um, Well, actually, let me not write it. Let me just tell you the answer. If <coughs> you would take the, if there are A1, if there are A11 cycles, you would take, so if P has A11 cycles, A22 cycles, and so on, Then, how many, many Q satisfy a Q P, sorry, Q inverse P Q equals P or, or any conjugate of P? It doesn't matter what I put there. Well, can anybody tell me what the answer is going to be? Sorry, say that again. Uh, that's right. So the number of ways of matching up all the one cycles is a, um, the, all the i cycles is ai factorial, and it, for each such matching, I can actually match the individual cycles each in i ways. So I get the product over i. Well, it'll stop eventually. But so this is the answer. Okay. Uh, fun question. No, let me see. Um, okay, well, let me. Let me actually uh, do a similar exercise. So let me look at the symmetric group on five letters. How many elements does this have? Sorry? By factorial order, so order 120. So uh, how many conjugacy classes does it have? Can somebody tell me, can somebody list the conjugacy classes? Sorry? Give me some con representatives of the conjugacy classes. Well, uh, yeah, OK. You can do them in any order. One, one, two, three, four, five, a five cycle. Um, four cycles. Um, one, two, three, four. Yep. Three cycles. Three cycles. Yep. Uh, two cycle, two cycle, two cycle. Uh. Have we got them all? Probably got them all. Yeah, I think we've got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, so if you want to list the conjugacy classes, you just have to list elements of all the possible cycle shapes, because we know that conjugacy is equivalent to the same cycle shape. So we could just have, we could have all one cycles, as it were.
Or we could have one five cycle, we could have a four cycle and a one cycle. Um, if we could have a three cycle and then we could either have two one cycles or a two cycle, we could have a two cycle and then either a three cycle, but we've already had that, or another two cycle and a one cycle, or just a two cycle and then three one cycles as it were. And there are no other possibilities. How many elements are there in this conjugacy class? One. Every, the only conjugate of the identity is one. How many five cycles are there in the symmetric group with five elements? No. How many ways can I write down a five cycle like this? How many choices are there for the first element? Four factorial, that's right. Four factorial is what? Uh, in a minute. Am I right? Yes, it's four factorial, yes. Um, sorry. Four factorial is 24. Well, why? Well, I can choose this element in five ways. This is then in four, this then in three, this then in two, this then in one, but which looks like five factorial. So it's five times four times three times two times one. However, this is the same as the cycle 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, which is the same as the cycle 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, which is the same as the cycle 5, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. It's the same as the cycle 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this same cycle can be written in five different ways, depending which of these elements I choose to put first. So I have to divide this answer by 5, which is why I get 4 factorial. How many... Uh, Four cycles are there. Thirty. Uh, you could well be right. So how did you get that? Um, I did five times four. Okay. And and then multiply by uh, sort of four factorial divided by four, which was three factorial. Yes. Okay. Um, let me write it a different way. Uh, I mean, that's fine. Sorry. Yes, if you, yes, if you like. You, can, you first of all choose this in any of five ways, and then how many ways of, uh, when you've got four elements left, how many ways are the left making that thing? That's true, too. Let, I mean, yeah, these are all perfectly good and equivalent ways. The, the way I would say it is we want to write it like this. So I can choose this in five ways. I can choose this in four ways, this in three ways, this in two ways. Didn't matter, but then that gives me this four cycle, but there are four different ways of writing this four cycle, so I have to divide it by four, and then there's just the one here, uh, which is again 30. What about this? Sorry? What did you say? Sorry? Fifty, five, zero. Yeah, no, I don't. I, you'll regret it. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, well, let me, let me do it again. This one you can choose in five ways. This one you can choose in four ways. This one you can choose in three ways. Divide by three because it doesn't, because I can write this given three cycle in three different ways. Then it really doesn't, I don't have any other choices because the others all have to be one cycles. I could write times two times one divided by two because it doesn't matter which order these are. But anyway, you get this, which is uh, 20. Um, this one is, so you can choose this in five ways, this in four ways, this in three ways. Divide by three, because it's a three cycle and the order doesn't matter. The remaining elements I've now got, this can be chosen in two ways, and then this is fixed. It doesn't matter what order I wrote them in, so I divide by two. So... Uh, it's probably 20 again. This one I can choose this in five ways, this in four ways, 
it doesn't matter what order I chose them in, so divide by two, I can then choose this in three ways and this in two ways. It doesn't matter what order I chose those two in, so I can divide by two. But, it also does, but it's also true that three, four is the same as one, two. I mean, I could also write this as three, four, one, two. I could put the three, four here and the one, two here. So it doesn't matter what order those two are in, so I divide by another two. Uh, and then you're left with one, so that's uh, 15. And in this one, I can choose the one in five ways, the two in four ways. When I've done that, uh, it doesn't matter the order, so I divide by two. Uh, and then it, these are all going to be one cycle, so there's no choices left. So that's 10, I think. Uh, and with a bit of luck, these things will add up to 120, 25, 55, 75, 95, 110, 120. So indeed, they do add up to 120. So we haven't made a mistake, which is uh, rather lucky. OK, so a reasonably clear to people how you can count these sorts of things. You have to think a bit carefully, exactly, because the problem is there's a certain amount of ambiguity, and you have to remember exactly what ambiguity there is. So it's, ve it's very like this, fact, like this formula I wrote down here, if you try to write it form. You, you write it as a product of cycles. You basically have a five factorial to begin with, which is the ways you can choose these things, and then you've got to divide by any ambiguity. So whenever you have an n cycle, you or an R cycle, you divide by R because you can write them in any order. And whenever you have a pair of cycles the same length, you divide by another two. Or if you had three cycles the same length, you would divide by a three factorial. Or four cycles the same length, you would divide by a four factorial because it didn't matter what. Um, so in fact, the formula is in, in SN. Um, so the, the order of the conjugacy class of P I mean, I don't really expect you to remember this formula. It's just, seeing as we you persuaded me to do this calculation, I might as well write it down. The important thing is the sort of thought process that goes into working it out. It's just n factorial divided by this thing. Um, if P has these cycles of these shapes. But uh, as I say, you don't want to remember this formula. You just want to remember the thought process that goes into it. Um, OK, so I've run out of time. I was, uh, there's a, at the end of the section I was supposed to tell you about, there is a, which is section whatever it was of the book, 6.6. Uh, .6. There's a rather uh, specific little calculation um, which I guess was put there because he's going to use it sometime later, which I don't now have time to talk about, but you should read about it. The concerns the case of the symmetric group. Uh, so if on a prime number of elements, so if P is a prime, well, so we're going to consider SP. The order of SP is P factorial. What power of P divides this? Just one. Can somebody give me a Silov P subgroup? Have you talked about Silov subgroups? Yeah. yeah. Of SP. Sorry? Well, it's going to be big. What's the order of the Silov P subgroup going to be? Um. So can you think of an element of order? So anything in the, the syllabus is going to have order P. Can you give me an element of order P? The elements that are a cycle of length P is the cyclic group generated by any element of order P. That will be a subgroup of order P, so generated by 1, 2, 3, up to P the cycle. OK, and then the exercise concerns Sill of P subgroup. Let me write P. Oh, I 
a sin of p subgroup p of sp is the cyclic group generated by this, the normalizer in sp of this cyclic group p, that's the, ele that's the set of all elements which, uh, do, you know what the normali do you know what normalizers are? Yes. Yeah. So the question is to calculate the normalizer of this Siloth P subgroup. Um, so I, as I don't have time to talk about it, I'll leave you to read about it at the end of uh, section 6.6. .6. Or you could almost try it as an exercise. Uh, you want, it, it's actually going to have order P minus 1 times P. You, first of all, you take something in the normalizer, you get it to fix one, and then you ask what, what it has to do. Okay, I'll stop there.